videos back to back. This is uh, video 784. We just made 783. We're going to make 785 in a minute. So you're right in the middle of a, of a Robin sandwich. Um, this video is going to be about it's kind of some longing for affection, maybe, might be the, the key word. Um, I noticed today as I was at work, or this last week rather, as I was at work, and I made mention of this before, I apologize if it's a, it's a repeat, but my um, where I work, my building is undergoing some renovation. Major renovation. Reven, reven, anyway, they're redoing the building. And um, they opened up a hallway this week that connected the two buildings. You have to go in one building to get to another building for the moment and we're walking through the last of the renovation right now this hallway you know connects the buildings and so uh, on a daily basis now I'm passing workmen no work women just all workmen carpenters electricians uh, you know different and and all ages of men boys young men old men and I guess maybe because of the estrogen, I'm a little more hypersensitive right now to men than I was two or three weeks ago, maybe? I don't know. Could be. And, you know, um, mm, something about a carpenter. Um, but no, um, and, and I'm going to talk about a stereotype in a minute here. We're going to talk about a stereotype. But it's happened to me like three times in the last week. Um, I walk by one or two of these workmen as they're going in a direction to be towards me or away from me. And um, they rush to open the door for me. Okay, which is very nice, very cool. And I say, thank you. I hope you have a nice day. And they say, oh, ma'am, we hope you have a nice day too, or, or something to that equivalent. Or I might say something to them about, you know, it's nice to see the renovations. You've done a good job or something. And they'll give me a compliment too. And the older men are very courteous. Okay, and and you know how I'm going to make a stretch here and say the programming of, I can't even put a time frame on it, not today's standards, okay, um, somewhere between a guy calling a girl they don't know, sweetie or hun, and something else, okay, you wouldn't do that nowadays, right? You know, you think about your grandparents or your great grandparents or, you know, the way they address women versus today. You, you just can't, they don't line up, you know, again, sweetheart, you know, da, 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 da. And it's just so affirming for the decision I made to transition to be treated that way. And it's, you could say it's sexist, okay? but it's in my mind it's very uplifting okay and obviously in my youth you know it was something that maybe i was afraid of that i wouldn't get you know that i would be made fun of or in some places in the country you get the shit kicked out of you you know you're a gay guy blah blah blah, blah. so you know that's been my experience from last week and, you know, kind of, again, I think since restarting estrogen, uh, I have a bit of a sense of humor. I don't know what else to call it. Maybe being sassy. I mean, I'm trying to think of a good, a good adjective here for what it is, or an adverb. Um, you know, uh, I think of a good word. You know, after one of these exchanges happened and I got on the elevator and I kind of looked at myself in the 
beer and I was like, you know, I, I did a, I struck a pose and I was like, you sassy bitch, you know, or something. And it was like, I laughed, you know, and I joked about, you know, using my feminine wiles, for example, you know, and I guess part of me, you know, I'm starved for that attention. I'm starved for that, you know, feminine, masculine, feminine, what I, what I would call the chase, you know, the game, you know, being wooed or pursued, you know, social interactions that are probably harmless in that I don't fear for my life. I don't fear I'm going to be raped. I don't feel I'm going to be killed. You know, it's just, I can't even think of a word for it. Just like a nostalgic, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe what was once the play between the sexes, you know, um, I don't know. I, I, I can't think. It's just, it, it's like fun and games, but in a healthy way. And, and again, you, you take into an extreme or to a certain level, it would definitely be considered sexual harassment, I guess. You know, something you don't want to do. And obviously they're, they're, they're contractors. I mean, they're not. They don't want to get kicked off the job. They don't want to lose, you know, because of being sexual or, or whatever. But it's it's just been nice to be playful, I guess, in that arena. Which I'm going to assume. Excuse me, I'm not flipping you off. Look into my eye. Um, you know, I, I just think it's just the play, you know, that uh, probably in a generation or two will not exist anymore, you know, because people die and whatnot. Um, but anyway, what I was driving towards or what made me want to make the video is, you know, I, in the last year, had the ability to explore being in a relationship with someone. And it was a trans man. And it didn't, didn't work out, you know. And I'm thankful for the experience, number one, for, you know, any bit of attention. is, is uh, <laughs> it's, it's nice to get an invitation to the party, even if you don't go. But, um, you know, I, I learned that it, it was not for me. You know, that I, I definitely want to be in a, in a physical relationship with a man, with a... And I can't, I probably just piss somebody off. Oh, well, trans men are men. Uh, uh, assigned male at birth, what is that? AMAB? You know, that I want to be in a relationship with a cis guy. I want to be in a relationship with an assigned male at birth. I want a penis, okay? This, this doesn't do it, okay, for me. This doesn't do it. I want... Um, and I'm thankful for the experience because I know now that's what I want, you know, it's kind of like learning what type of ice cream flavors you like. You don't know until you try it. You're like, yeah, you know what? Uh, pistachio, raisin, caramel, supreme is, is not for me, you know? Um, so I'm thankful for the experience, but it kind of makes me wonder kind of what the future holds. Um, men of my generation, and I would almost assume other generations, and it's terrible to make an assumption, I know, but would probably see me as a gay man. You know what I mean? That's what they're going to see, or that's what they're going to It's a tremendous assumption on my part, but, you know, I think about my contemporaries, maybe, you know, I can think of one or two people right now. And they may very well just see me as a gay guy, you know. And so would I have to go to someone older? In the movie um, Some Like It Hot, I believe, Tony Curtis, Jack Lemmon, they dress up as women, jazz players. Uh, at the end of the movie, um, 
it's revealed that the old one of the old men who's in love with one of the girls you know she takes off her wig or whatnot she's like I, i'm i'm a guy and the old man's like i don't care you know he's he's wise enough to know that he loves the person for who they are kind of like at the end of tootsie um you know dustin hoffman's like you know i can't think of her name what was the name dorothy uh you know i am dorothy i may look a little differently you know so you know you um you know a person i think who has experienced life and loss understands that you know when you make a connection with someone that's re real you know it, it can over overlook some things you know multicultural multiracial multi multi-generational uh, harold and maude might be another but i'm full of movie facts this morning aren't i harold and maude you know, he's a young boy she's an old woman they they find a connection you know um but it makes me wonder somewhat you know will i find someone and of course you we can hope you know david lopan you know we keep trying like fools um another movie reference but you know i i can think of one person right now that that uh there's a potential for a relationship there but i don't know you know i don't know if they'll ever see me as anything other than you know a gay guy and i don't know if Yeah, I don't think they have the self-confidence in themselves to be in a relationship. For most of their life, they have been a morbidly obese man and probably doesn't think anyone could be attracted to them. And, you know, as they've lost a lot of weight in the last year and they're developing their own sense of self-efficacy and you know building up confidence and whatnot and you know i think two years ago i, I saw them in a comic shop and i was fascinated with them and i gave them my phone number it's one of the first guys i gave my phone number to he never called me and i ran into them a year or two later and you know periodically i go and i visit them just to talk to them you know and I don't think they've made that connection yet that I go to a place to talk to them and then I leave you know it's like a a, a fish you know nibbling at a bobber you know and I don't think they've realized yet that you know I'm interested in them or would be interested there's potential there's possibility there and uh, you know it's a very delicate situation I don't know what movie that's from it's very delicate um, beginnings often are but it just kind of made me pause and wonder you know if you know I have three years left here and uh, my daughter will graduate and I don't know what she's going to do. I don't know if I'm going to stick around. Um, I don't know if I'm going to move up to Green Bay or not. You know, um, you know, I would stay here for this person. But uh, kind of like a bad 80s teen movie. He doesn't even know I exist. You know, and I guess my question would be, you know, will he ever see me in that light and it makes me it makes me when i get full of courage you know it would make me want to pursue him again and kind of be like you know can you ever see me as a woman instead of just as another gamer you know what i mean can he see me as, 
you know, right now I'm just a customer at a, at a store that he works at, you know, and I, I don't want to be, you know, I feel like if I go there, it's kind of a, he's trapped. He can't go anywhere. He runs the store, you know, and, um, you know, I don't want to walk in and corner him there. And then maybe that's where I ask him out on a date. Mm. I was potential there, you know. But I, I don't know. I don't want to mess it up, you know. And definitely, like I said, with his past, he may not be ready for a relationship right now. And, and and the other thing too is he, like I said, he may view me just as a gay guy. You know, I I don't know. I guess you don't know till you try, right? Nothing ventured, nothing gained. You'll miss every target you don't take aim at. But I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I want to get my life more in order. Um, you know, I'm I'm coming out of my depression. <laughs> Things are just now starting to pick up, and um, you know, what do I have to offer? <laughs> and uh, in clerks, uh, uh, Jay says something ineffective. You know, what good is a good-looking plate with nothing on it? You know, what can I offer in a relationship right now? You know, my house is a wreck. I'm a mess. Blah, 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 blah. At the same time, you know, people are, people wax and wane. You know, we're not perfect. We don't, you know, the sun may always shine on TV, but that's not the way life is. So maybe this is reality. Whatnot. I see the skirt behind me. I made that skirt. The black one with the flowers. I don't think I can wear it. I'm too fat now. But Anyway, so this is video number two in a series. I'll make one more today and then I'll get off my butt. But I just kind of wanted to share, you know, just kind of some relationship questions. And, you know, again, um, Obviously, you don't know till you try. Um, maybe I just need to wait until I'm a little more established. Uh, I definitely want the estrogen to work its magic. Because <sighs> it's fucking with my head. I think I just made a video about that. Yeah, up here. <laughs> you know, women are crazy to begin with, but right now I'm wacko. Uh, I'm Sybil, <laughs> and, uh, you know, mm. we mentioned, too, another video about, you know, your, what do people do with, like, their male personalities, or, I think I asked, you know, what were you before you transitioned and everything, and, you know, I still feel like I'm the same person, and I think in the video I said something about, you know, letting, letting Karen out, letting Karen you know, Karen is, uh, uh, my female self is, is, you know, kind of like a, a cocoon in, um, in the, um, Attack on Titan series when the person, uh, you know, they can form a crystallis around themselves, protect themselves if they need to. And she's kind of in stasis right now, but she's starting to kind of move and wake up and, you know, get her. Uh, it's almost like pseudopods, or you know, she's wrapping herself. You know, she's she's growing and making connections now. And I need to, I kind of need to let that happen for a little while longer before I make a move. I think, at least that's what I'm thinking now. Uh, shit, if I wasn't working tomorrow, I'd be at the store where he works. I'd be like this. Uh, no, I would. I'd be building, building models. But anyway, so that's this video. A little longer than the last one, but we will make a third one here if you can stick around. Uh, if not, uh, regardless, I wish you the best of luck becoming your authentic self. I hope that's not becoming too much of a rope. And the Lord be with you, and also with you. Uh, but anyway, till next time.